The House passed the remaining six fiscal year 2024 budget bills Friday morning, setting a tight deadline for the Senate to vote on the bills by midnight to avoid a partial government shutdown. This vote could affect House Speaker Mike Johnson. Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia has filed a motion to remove him as Speaker. The $1.2 trillion package includes defense, homeland security, financial services, government, labor, health departments, congressional, state, and foreign activities. Provides funding to the federal government through the end of the fiscal year on September 30th. A two-thirds majority was required for the bill to pass. The final vote was 286, 134. There were warning signs Thursday evening that the vote may be closer than Republican leaders expected. Repier Robert Aderholt, R. Alla, chairman of the Labor Party's HHS subcommittee, said senators on both sides of the aisle would vote against the bill because of its inclusion of the e-marking provision. Stated, this is not a bill that my subcommittee wrote or supported. The Senate is free to make spending proposals directed by Congress that will never gain support in the House, he said in a statement. Mentioned in, Republican lawmakers also expressed disappointment that the policy did not go further to harden the southern border and criticized the narrow time frame between the release of more than 1,000 pages of documents early Thursday morning and Friday's vote. However, Rep. Ken Calvert, R. Califa, chairman of the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, urged his colleagues to vote yes on the package. All members need to understand the consequences if this package is not passed. The only other option is a year-long resolution that destroys our security and puts our country at risk. I think so, he said before voting. No is a vote for China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and Hamas. Congressman Rep. Rosa DeLauro, D. Khan, ranking member of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health, Human Services, and Education, said the bill represents a compromise. She said, however, I am pleased that many of the extreme cuts and measures proposed by House Republicans were rejected. She joined fellow House and Senate appropriators, Rep. K. Granger, R. Texas, and he mentioned working with Senator Collins, Maine, and Murray, Washington. This is the first time federal funding negotiations will be led by women on all four corners. What's in the package? This package benefits both Republicans and Democrats. Republicans advocate increasing the number of ICE detention beds and Border Patrol agents and cutting funding to NGOs. It has also promulgated rules prohibiting the Consumer Product Safety Commission from banning gas stoves and prohibiting diplomatic facilities from flying flags that are not the official flag of the United States. Democrats praise her $1 billion increase in child care and early learning programs, including her $12 billion for Head Start programs. Another provision that has received significant attention is a measure that would suspend funding to UNRWA, the United Nations agency that provides aid to Palestinians, until March 2025. This followed Israel's assertion that more than a dozen UNRWA personnel were involved in the October 7 Hamas attack on Israel. Other provisions of the package, discretionary spending for the National Institutes of Health is $48.6 billion, representing a $300 million increase in base funding compared to fiscal year 2023. This includes a $75 million increase in mental health research, a $100 million increase in Alzheimer's disease research, a $120 million increase in cancer research, and a $5 million increase in opioid research. $4.6 billion for drug use prevention and treatment. The bill includes $1.5 billion in state aid to fight opioids and $145 million for opioid control programs for rural areas, $4 billion for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, increased by $25 million. The purpose is to help low-income households heat and cool their homes, gives military personnel a 5.2% raise his $1.18 billion for the Small Business Administration, including his $316.8 million in entrepreneurial development grants, $300 million in funding for the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, U.S. Army recruitment and retention operations to $4,444,792 million, an increase of $57 million, Capitol Police. What does this mean for Chairman Johnson? Under the rules of the House, only one member may vote to remove the Speaker. Months after House Republicans ousted then-Speaker Kevin McCarthy, 
Green's motion to impeach Johnson is not privileged, making it unclear if and when it will be voted on. Johnson only received a majority of one vote. Colorado Republican Rep. Ken Buck resigned from the House of Representatives on Friday, and Wisconsin Republican Rep. Mike Gallagher also announced Friday that he would resign, effective April 19. Freedom Caucus Chairman Bob Good, ARVA, told reporters before the vote that he blamed Mr. Johnson for bringing the package to a vote in the first place. He said he doesn't want to discuss personnel issues within the Republican leadership, but that he cannot defend the Speaker. Mr. Johnson's challenge will deepen next month when the House of Commons debates funding for Ukraine, a divisive issue in the chamber.